Hello and welcome to the Argyle General Counsel and Chief Legal Officer Summit Law Department Strategy 2023. My name is Vicki Lynn with Argyle. It's great to have everyone joining us today. I just have some information to share with you and then we'll, we are, we'll turn the floor over to our esteemed opening keynote speaker for the event. We also welcome you to stay socially connected during today's event. For those of you who are active tweeters, please use the hashtag Argyle Digital and follow us on Twitter at Argyle Exec Forum. Also be sure to follow Argyle on LinkedIn for special announcements. And I just want to take a moment to touch on our content neutrality policy, which we've curated based on the feedback we received over the years from our members. We've worked closely with our speaking faculty to ensure that you receive a set of balanced and neutral viewpoints throughout all of the sessions today, and we appreciate our members' support of the policy. Finally, and most importantly, we want to hear from you. So during each session, we've encar we encourage you to submit your questions and comments in the Q&A box on your screen. And following each presentation, we've set aside time for our speakers to weigh in on those questions. Thank you again for joining us today, and now let's get started. Without further ado, I would like to introduce Dan Lantry, Vice President, Legal Affairs North America at Sonova Group. We're so excited to have Dan for his opening keynote presentation titled, Purpose Driven Leadership, Defining Your Legal Department's Core Values. Welcome, Dan, over to you. Thanks, Vicki Lynn, I appreciate it. Um, I'm you know, honored and, and excited to be presenting on this topic. I have to confess, I don't consider myself an expert on this topic by any stretch, but I'm very interested in it. And frankly, on this topic, I think showing up is half the battle. So um, without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so first of all, let me just say that um, uh, these are my own thoughts. These are not the thoughts of my employer. Um, or any other third party. Um, I just wanted to be uh, very candid with you all today about my thoughts. And uh, I hope this is a really a great interactive session and I welcome your, your uh, questions throughout the session. I'll do my best to, to try to cover those. All right, let's get going. So let me, let me just step back a little bit here. Here's a little overview of, of our path, our journey today. Um, I've tried to give a lot of thought to, to this and, and tried to uh, present some, some uh, suggestions here about how you attack this issue. Uh, there's clearly more than one way to do it, um, but these are my thoughts. I hope you find some value. All right, from my perspective, uh, it makes sense for me to start with the definition phase. So um, you want to align with your, with your company's values, right? So you really need to start with where what does your company believe in? Um, you wanna make sure there's clear alignment there. And then you need to take stock. You need to take inventory of where are we today? Um, what do we believe in today? What do we do today? Where are our gaps? Where are our strengths? We need to be authentic and realistic about where we are. But at the same time, I, I think it's okay to have big aspirations as well. Um, you know, a little stretch is, is fine from my perspective. So when we looked at this, uh, and I'll get a little bit more into what we did as a team later on in the presentation, but we wanted to start with our company's values. So you see at the left here, our company's vision. We envision a world where everyone enjoys the delight of hearing and therefore lives a life without limitations. Just a quick plug on my company. We're a global company based uh, near Zurich, Switzerland. We bring uh, hearing to people through cochlear implants. Uh, Phonak and Unitron branded hearing aids, um, audiological clinics throughout the world, and most recently, uh, the Sennheiser consumer hearing uh, products. We live and constantly talk about our values, which are we care, we drive innovation, we strive for excellence, we take accountability, and we build the best team. And I really wanted to make sure that those are encapsulated in the, in the goals that we came up with as our team, but also kind of personalize our, our, our goals, our values for, for our team in particular. Uh, so then let's go to the next step, uh, which in my view is communicate. How are we gonna communicate? What are we gonna communicate? My view is keep it simple. Um, make it memorable, make sure people can, you know, clearly recall what we've all agreed on as our values, be able to um, paraphrase them, be able to speak, you know, quickly to them. 
uh, and live those, right? And we're going to talk about that. Um, you know, when it comes to visions and missions and values and things like that, sometimes we have these big aspirations about what we're, you know, what we're going to do. And, and we say, yeah, we're all going to row the boat in the same direction. Um, sometimes, unfortunately, what happens in practice is something closer to this, right? Um, you know, deal with it. <laughs> and so um, my approach here is to try to give you some, some practical suggestions on how we align the walk, the talk with the walk. Finally, I would say it's important to, and we're going to talk about this a little bit more, where it's important to calibrate this on a regular basis and make sure that what we are saying and what we are doing are in alignment. And if not, step back to the definition stage, perhaps, and make sure you got that correct. All right. Um, so once it's communicated, um, I think we need to implement those values. Um, and as I've written here on this first, first bullet to the right, it's if it's not written, it doesn't exist. So you've got to write it down. There needs to be consistent and continuous alignment on those on those values. We need to keep each other accountable. Um, we need to make sure that we have some way to assess, okay, where did we start? Are we going the right direction? How do we know if we're progressing? How are we gonna uh, evaluate ourselves? Are we actually doing the things that we say we value and that we believe in? All right, so the next step, as far as my uh, as I'm concerned, is in order to effectively implement those values, you need to give people credit when they get it correct, right? You need to be able to say, hey, you nailed it. Congratulations, you are really living up to our values. Thank you for that. Um, on the other hand, if somebody doesn't nail it, I think you need to be willing and able to, to throw the yellow card or the red card and say, you know, we agreed on these values and it looks in this case like maybe that didn't happen. So let's talk about that. Let's figure out what we can do to make sure uh, we do it uh, better the next time. All right, I, I talked about this already before. I, you've got to have an effective way to monitor um, how it's going. Um, are we actually doing what we said we value? Are we living them? Have we established um, mechanisms to ensure that it's both easy and uh, practical to implement the values as, as we've articulated them? If there's that disconnect, it'll show up um, and there will and it'll give you an opportunity to go back to the starting point redefine, recalibrate, and make sure that you've got something that's workable going forward. So, um, and, and it happens. Um, you know, sometimes you think you believe in something or you have a, a particular value. And as you get into it, you realize, well, it, that was close, but not exactly right. And, and from my perspective, I think it's absolutely okay and appropriate to go back and continue to refine and iterate over time. Finally, uh, and this is where um, I really want to spend a fair amount of time before I talk about our own, my team's personal experience. What do we do with all this? You know, having values, having them written, having rules and so forth is great. Um, but how do we really take advantage of this on a day in and day out basis? Um, we spend a lot of time with our outside counsel. We spend a lot of time with other third parties. And in, in a lot of ways, I think they are a reflection of our departments and of our organizations. And um, we wanna make sure that there is alignment uh, between our values and the values, uh, at least that we can observe of our outside counsel and our, our other providers. Um, values such as DE&I, uh, very important, right? We wanna make sure if, if this is a value of the organization as, as it is for many, um, does your law firm share those values? Do they, you know, is it a check the box exercise or do they take it seriously? How do they monitor that? How do they ensure that they're on the right path um, and that the matters that you're working on with the firm are staffed with, with the uh, attorneys and other 
professionals that that you'd like to to work with uh, as an organization. Another area of alignment with outside providers is uh, just other third parties, distributors. Um, if you if you make things and you sell them, your distributors are a reflection of your organization. Um, obviously, we've got a lot of legal reasons why it it's important to make sure that we're working with reputable and and um, ethical uh, third parties. Um, need to make sure they are not you know sanctioned uh, and operating in inappropriate ways. Uh, but people will uh, and organizations will draw conclusions based on who you are interacting with as third parties. And finally, um, you know, the industry. Uh, I, I'm in the healthcare industry, have been for most of my career. Um, there are industry standards, industry trade groups, industry codes of conduct. ESG is everywhere. Um, every organization of any size has uh, policies and procedures relating to ESG. These are all very, very important to ensure that there, again, is alignment between what you as a legal team have identified as, as your values and, um, and uh, what the, the broader uh, industry and segment uh, are doing. So let me give you um, a little more insight into how we've looked at this uh, on our team. When I was first asked to, to do this presentation, I, I said, this is really interesting. I have a huge uh, interest in this topic, but I realized we'd never really talked about it as a team. And I, and I thought that was probably not good that I hadn't had that uh, journey with my team uh, before I'm talking to you today. So we did, we went through the process. And we, um, we did some brainstorming. We, well, I, I shared with them that I was going to be giving this talk. We, I said, I really feel like it would be good for us as a team to um, you know, really assess what our values are and, and document those and then try to make sure we are living those values every day. Um, so what did we come up with? Uh, you know, I, I had some initial ideas that I tossed out. The, the team liked some of them and they didn't like others. And we, we I think, refined that process or refined those values. Um, to me, these make a lot of sense. They resonate with me and, and hopefully they will with you as well. So the first value that we came up with is fidelity um, to each other, to the organization. Uh, you know, we as lawyers obviously have fiduciary obligations to our client, to, to the organization that we represent, um, and to each other as, as colleagues, as teammates on the legal team. Um, so that one is number one um, for us because it, I think it's absolutely critical. Um, number two, focus, focusing on opportunities. Um, I had a CEO tell me early in my career that, you know, as far as he was concerned, lawyers, it's, it's, it's a math equation. Either they're adding or they're subtracting. <laughs> and we want to be adding, right? And so this has to do with how do we help the organization create value? How do we identify risk? How do we mitigate that risk to avoid value um, loss? Um, and how do we, um, most importantly, I think these days, how do we innovate? How do we use technology, process, procedures, uh, and new ways of thinking about things to really innovate, um, you know, the legal process and how we deliver our, our, um, our advice and guidance to our clients. Um, got some good questions here. I think I'm just going to finish this and then I'll, I'll try to get some of these questions here. Finally, number three, fulfillment. Um, I had a different word that I had suggested, but the team said it was a little juvenile, so it was fun. Um, but we came up with fulfillment. Um, but the reality is we spent a lot of time with each other, um, a lot of time with each other. Um, and it's very important that we enjoy what we are doing, that we find joy and fulfillment in, in what we're doing. Um, and that comes from doing a job well done, of course. Um, and it's great to be a good technical lawyer. But above and beyond that, um, it's wonderful being in healthcare and, and working for the kind of organization that I work with. I know every day that I am helping people. And to me, that means a lot. Um, and we have uh, put a lot of energy into making sure that we as a legal team are cohesive, 
Um, that means um, after the worst of the pandemic was over, we, we went to a hybrid model where we're um, all committed to being in the office together two days a week. Um, we're all physically together one day a week, uh, specifically on Wednesdays to have our team meeting um, live, which is great. Um, so we're, we're really trying to make sure that we um, create, again, create the mechanisms, create the tools to allow us to live those values that we say we actually believe in. Um, you know, it's a journey. Uh, we're, we're human beings. We're not always perfect. Um, but I think it is important, as I said before, to go through the process, write them down, um, and, and, and keep yourself accountable. And if you see that you're straying, if you see that you're having um, challenges um, implementing and, and really you know, walking that talk, um, it's important to talk about it and as a team and say, what, you know, how, how did we get off the rails here? Let's make sure we, we get this back on track. Uh, let's see. So that was our journey. And that is the end of my prepared comments, believe it or not. I was very efficient in getting through those. So I love the fact that um, we have a lot of great questions and I welcome more of your questions. Um, so the first question, question is, do you find ENPS surveys helpful in measuring alignment? And I'm not sure I know what ENPS stands for. So maybe that person could clarify a little bit more what is meant by that. Um, second question I see here is, where do you think legal leaders, legal leaders make the biggest mistake when trying to communicate and live by a set of core values? Well, I think it's misalignment. Um, if, you say, if you say that you believe in something, but you actually do something different on a regular basis, people will see that. And the, the, the whole effort is, is a waste. And in fact, I think could potentially be a negative. Um, so I really think you just need to be honest and candid. Um, what, what do we aspire to be? What are our realities? And what do we actually think we can do and implement? Um, and how are we gonna hold ourselves accountable? Um, so we've intentionally chosen fairly broad concepts uh, to guide at us, at least for now. I mean, we can always go back and revisit those. But again, there's got to be alignment. Um, people will see that um, immediately if there's a lack of alignment. And I think it will make the, the whole effort um, potentially a negative. Um, how do you reconcile difference in opinions amongst team members? Well, we have a very we have a very direct and candid and transparent way of communicating. Um, and I, as the leader of the group, I try to model that because I believe in it. Um, I certainly not write about not only everything. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm wrong a lot. And, and so you need, to be, you need to be humble. You need to be open with each other and be willing um, to hear those different views and perspectives. Um, diversity is a wonderful thing. Um, it, it allows us to see things through a lens that's different than our own. Um, so we, I've created an environment where it's absolutely not only okay, but important for people to voice their questions, concerns, you know, either in a larger group or one-on-one -on -one if, if, if that's more appropriate. But um, I, there are definitely a, a broad range of views on the team. But we welcome that and we value that. And I think we've really learned to embrace that as a team. Um, next question, do you review your values and recalibrate or change them from time to time? Said that, right? So we're early on the journey in terms of formalizing our values. Um, so this is fresh for us now, um, but yes, absolutely. We, I think we need to monitor how it's going. Uh, and at some point, if we think that you know, there's a there's a, a miss, we will need to go back and recalibrate that. So absolutely, I think that's part of the process. Um, I don't know how, how many of you have read the book Mindset, but it's really that growth mindset, right? You have to be observing and learning and iterating, you know, constantly. Um, next question, how do you course correct if you do not see your values being put into action? Well, again, um, and, and this is the this is the hard part, I think. How do we you know, call the penalty? How do we throw the flag in a respectful way, right? Where it's not going to be off-putting or 
make people feel like they're being um, singled out? Uh, it's a good question, right? I think a lot of it has to do with your style. What do you feel comfortable with? Um, a lot of that, of course, should be done to the extent possible privately. If somebody says something, you know, out in the open that's really inappropriate needs to be addressed at that point in time, those are hard, right? That's a very difficult thing to deal with. Um, but I think it's it's good ahead of time, right? To agree with your team, how are we gonna throw the flag in a respectful way? And it could be something as simple as, hey, I'm throwing the flag, right? Um, you did something, you said something that seems to be inconsistent with this value that we all uh, said that we agreed upon. Um, so I think getting that alignment ahead of time before the first time it happens, I think is, is critically important. Um, what do you recommend as the first steps when setting core values for, for a team whose input is, is essential? Everyone. It's a team sport. Um, I did come in, candidly, I did come in with some of my own thoughts um, just to get the ball rolling. Um, but it was absolutely a team effort. Um, everyone bought in, everyone thought it was a great idea. Um, and we are all committed to making it work and to continually, you know, iterating on these over time. Um, are there any core values that are more talk than actually actionable? Um, well, I, we've tried to make sure that everything that we've come up with as, as our core values are actionable and monitorable and measurable. Um, I'm not, I, I, you know, some of them are a little more nebulous, but um, there, there need to be ways to assess um, the progress that you're making. Are you on the right journey? Are you heading in the direction that, that you'd like to be headed? Um, so yes, I mean, of course, there are ways to come up with core values that are more talk than, than actionable. But our objective here was to, to try to be very realistic and come up with very actionable, um, uh, actionable uh, steps. Employee net promoter score. Okay, yeah. So I'm familiar with net promoter scores generally. Um, and let me go back to that first question. Thank you for that clarification. Um, so we haven't, I personally have not done employee net promoter score surveys. Um, I would love to learn more about them. Um, I've done them, you know, at the business level where we've asked customers to give us NPS. Uh, and I think it's a really interesting and valuable process. Um, so I'd like to, I'd like to learn more about what we could do as an internal team to maybe do that kind of a survey. Um, thank you for that clarification. How can GCs assure that legal department core values align with overall corporate vision? Well, that's where I started, right? You have to start with your overall corporate vision. As a team, you, you can't do your own thing. You've got to be aligned with what the organization says that they value as an organization. Um, so yeah, that's that that from my perspective, that's the starting point. And and if you can't get behind your the values and vision of your, your corporation, you probably are in the wrong place. Um, so you know, that's a good gut check uh, personally to say, do I believe in these in this vision? Do I believe in these values? Um, uh, but, but that's where it all starts from my perspective. Next question. Do you recommend a top-down approach to values or a bottom-up approach? What if the leadership is not aligned with the values percolating up? Um, well, I think it's both. I, need, I think it needs to be dynamic from the top down and from the bottom up. From the top down, I mean, the vision and the values that I shared with you at the beginning of this presentation did not just materialize. They, somebody had to sit down and think about those and write those down and communicate those. And that starts at the top. Um, so, so the top absolutely has to set the tone, has to create the parameters uh, and articulate that vision and those values. Um, but then um, I think what, we, what I'm talking about here and what I hope you all do with your teams is you know, do more of a bottom-up approach. Um, at the very local you know, legal team level, what, how are we gonna bring those values and that vision vision into realization in words that resonate with us, right? In words that make sense to us, but of course have to be in alignment with the, with the corporation's values. Um, so I'm not sure if I fully addressed your, your, your question there, but I think I, it's gotta be both um, starting at the top and then working from the bottom. 
Uh, next question, can you name three core values for those of us that want to understand better? Well, um, there are a lot of core values um, and we've talked about a number of them here. For me personally, it's all about authenticity. Um, there has to be alignment between what you do and how you live your life as a person and what you say you believe in. Um, and there's a lot of different synonyms for things out there that I'm sure a lot of us can agree upon. So it's not about magic words. It's not about getting the, the word perfectly. It's about capturing the concept um, uh, of these things that you want to be your guidepost, your North Star to how you, how you interact each day with your clients, with, with each other, with third parties. Um, so in terms of three core values, gosh, I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot of them out there. Um, but, but again, authentic, authenticity, you know, trust, transparency, communication. I mean, there's just so, so much that you can do with, with all the things that are out there. I think you have to also think about where your team is on sort of the maturity scale. Are there issues with people not feeling comfortable sharing or perhaps offering a different perspective? And maybe you really want to highlight those values in particular to make sure that the team understands that those are things that we really want to focus on. Um, maybe uh, other things that we really value are just not an issue and they're unspoken and everyone's living in them already. Maybe you want to go ahead and just document that or, or maybe you, you, you focus on other things that you want to highlight. So again, I, I hope I did justice to that question, but there's a lot of them out there. And I think you just really, with your team, you need to decide what are, what are the things that we really want to focus on. And if we want to revisit in six months or a year, that's great. We certainly can. Which of the core values you implemented has had the most significant effect on our on my department's success? Um, you know, it's probably the fidelity one. Um, we definitely have more to do in terms of focus. I'm constantly preaching that you know, you know, uh, I, I have an interest in legal operations and you know, legal technology and just trying to make things better. And I always tell my team, let's work smarter, not harder. We definitely have more more work to do in that area. But from a fidelity perspective, I think we have absolutely embraced that as a team. And I really think it does help us uh, row the boat in the same direction. And that's absolutely critical for effectiveness of any team, uh, of any organization. So I'm really proud about that. Um, you know, we're not perfect by any stretch, but um, that one in particular, I think it has meant a lot to us. Um, you know, the focus and then, and then finally the fulfillment. Uh, I think we all believe in our mission our vision and uh, we enjoy coming to work and, and uh, uh, being together. So with that, looks like we have about two minutes left. Um, I think I covered most of the questions. Vicki Lynn, um, should I hand it back to you? Yes, thank you, Dan. Yep, you answered them all. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for such an insightful keynote presentation. And I want to thank everyone for joining us today for this presentation. This session, along with all of today's content, will be available on demand following the event. Thank you again, Dan. Thank you.